Academy for Social Change presents Metonymy. Your neighbor Kazia has just gotten a new job in finance and her family is having a dinner party to celebrate. Kazia's mother stands up to make a toast and says, Lend me your ears, everyone. I'd like to thank my friends for giving me a hand with this dish. Most importantly, I'd like to congratulate Kazia on her new position with the suit on Wall Street. When you're listening to this speech, you know that Kazia's mom isn't literally asking each of the guests to physically remove their ears from their bodies and give them to her. Everyone knows that we use our ears to hear, so they're closely related to the concept of listening. Thus, Kazia's mother can use this phrase as a replacement for listen up or pay attention without fearing that anyone will misunderstand her. In this example, ears is a metonym for listen or attention. Metonymy is a figure of speech that substitutes one word or phrase for another with which it is closely associated. The comparison created is built on the relatedness of the thing and its new name. The new word or phrase is called the metonym and it must be conceptually related to the original. The word metonymy came into the English language from the classical Latin word metonymia, which translates to change of name. The oldest surviving definition of metonymy in Latin is in the Rhetorica ad Heroneum, a book on rhetoric written in the late AD BC. The definition has remained relatively the same since this first mention. However, the types of associations that metonymy utilizes are unique to a given culture and language. Thus, the metonyms of people of prehistory used in Latin will be different than the ones we use today. For example, hundreds of years ago, societies called people by the primary tool they used in their occupation, such as how people who operated mills received the surname Miller. The type of association is no longer possible in our naming system. Since metonymies are based on cultural concepts, you may not even notice you're using or hearing one. For example, Wall Street is a street in New York City that has been the home of many brokerages and investment banks. Because of this, many Americans refer to the entire US financial industry as Wall Street. Thus, Kazia's new job on Wall Street may not actually be located on Wall Street at all. This use of figurative language would probably confuse someone who isn't familiar with American finance. This issue becomes particularly pertinent in media coverage. Journalists often use metonymy in their newspaper titles in order to be more concise. However, the brevity of metonymy can create ambiguity. For example, a reporter may say, the White House issued a statement today. This is a metonymy because the building we call the White House didn't say anything, but we substitute this phrase for the names of the people who work for the executive government. Using this metonymy leaves us unclear about who exactly issued the statement. Was it the president, the press secretary, the vice president, or someone else? When you notice that a metonymy is imprecise, you should question whether or not it was intended and why. Doing so will prepare you to carefully consider the meaning and implications of the metonymies that you create in your own work. Although there are more commonplace metonymies, you can get creative by making your own as long as you keep in mind the audience's understanding of the conceptual connections between the name and its metonymic substitute. Using metonymies in this way can allow you to bring attention to associations not suggested by the literal name. It can also help you avoid repetition or even sound punchier by creating alliteration and other prosodic features in your speech. Now it's your time to think further. What are some common sayings that use metonymy?